Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this video, I would like to show you a total of four workflows you can build in SharePoint out of the box. Now, obviously, um, the primary option to build uh, some sort of automation or workflow would be to utilize Power Automate uh, tool uh, application that we have. But um, obviously, you really kind of need to know what you are doing and be familiar with this tool. However, many times, many times, um, you know, your needs might be pretty straightforward and simple. For example, maybe you want to obtain an approval on a document or get some sort of reminder, um, you know, about the document um, ex expiring or something like that. Uh, really simple. And that's a, this are essentially the scenarios I would like to talk to you about. Uh, there are a total of four workflows you can build uh, out of the box. And let me start with the first one. Uh, and that is the ability to get uh, a sign off or approval. Now, there is nothing you really need to configure up front. Um, you literally just navigate to the library where the document resides. And here we go. I have this document and I would like maybe my manager to approve it. So um, you click on the checkbox next to the document, uh, then choose, um, you know, automate flows and you will see this option request sign off. And essentially what happens behind the scenes, um, it makes sure you have all the proper licensing because it is building the workflow behind the scenes for you. That's why it needs to rely and, you know, check your, um, that you have uh, sufficient licensing. Um, and then you just uh, create a workflow. And uh, yeah, behind the scenes, uh, the uh, Power Automate workflow is created. Um, it's a really kind of simple scenario, but um, if you want to tweak it later on, you can actually do that. Um, now, the first time you do this, uh, it actually takes uh, a bit longer, but here we go. Uh, finally loaded. And um, yeah, all you need to do is just, you know, provide who, uh, you want the, you know, this document to be approved by and your personal message to, um, you know, to that uh, individual. And that's it. Um, you just literally, you know, you click on uh, run um, a workflow button. And what will happen now is that the recipient will, um, you know, get an email. Um, I believe they will also get uh, a notification on Teams and they will be able to either approve or reject. And the status column will actually, um, you know, show you whether the document has been um, approved or rejected. Uh, so obviously I don't have anything listed um, for this document over here because um, obviously it needs to be either approved uh, or rejected, but you will get to see uh, the, the appropriate status uh, once that happens. So that's uh, pretty much to it for this particular workflow. Uh, the second workflow I want to show you is a reminder workflow. And it's for situations when you maybe want to get a reminder. Let's say you have a library of company policies and maybe they need to be renewed every year. And you want to be reminded when, um, you know, certain policies, um, you know, do expire. Um, and you can either select a particular, you know, a particular policy you want to be reminded of, or uh, I believe you don't even need to uh, do that, you can actually, um, yes, yeah, set a reminder on the whole library. So we will be reminded about anything expiring in this library. And yeah, once again, automate flows, set a reminder. Now, what's super important here is that you do need to have a custom date column created. So if you don't have a column, you would not be able, there is nothing to remind you about, right? You do need to have a date column created, which I do. All right. And um, yeah, you just, once again, Let's just follow the prompts. All right, let's see. Automate flows and set a reminder. We are going based off expiration date. You could obviously have multiple date columns. And once again, behind the scenes, it is building the workflow uh, for you. Not sure why it's, uh, uh, you know, complaining about my connection. Let's just uh, re-authenticate. Uh, all right, hopefully it will, uh, go through. I think it's doing something behind the scenes. Here we go. And yeah, click continue. And that's it. Once again, uh, pretty straightforward. You just uh, give it a name. Um, you know, you can you can uh, give any name to it. And I want to be reminded maybe 15 days in advance. Click create. 
And what will happen now, essentially, yeah, the workflow is created. Obviously, it will do the math. And, um, um, you know, 15 days before expiration dates um, of uh, policies, it will uh, send you a reminder email. So definitely, definitely uh, worthwhile considering that. Now, um, actually, for this particular workflow, we now have another option uh, through rules feature. Let me, since we're here, let me show it to you. Uh, if you navigate to uh, under automate uh, rules, we can create a rule. And yeah, we actually have a rule now based on that scenario. So it's not really, it doesn't utilize the uh, workflow, the power automate option. You can actually do uh, the same uh, kind of option here. You see 15 days before expiration and send an email to me. All right, pretty much what I just did through Power Automate. The only difference is that um, obviously if you build a Power Automate uh, workflow, um, you, uh, let me just refresh the screen. Uh, if you build a Power Automate workflow, you obviously can build other steps, right? And customize it further with rules, you know, pretty much the interface you saw was the only one you could, um, um, you know, kind of customize. All right, let me show you uh, another workflow. So that was the second workflow we could create out of the box. There is another one, and this one is related to pages. And uh, this is actually super useful. This third one might become super, super handy if you are, let's say, the owner of um, a particular, you know, let's say HR department, and you, uh, you have your communication site and um, obviously, you have some colleagues who are helping you with the content, but you know what? Because this is an employee-facing site, you probably do want others, um, you know, obviously to contribute, but you you don't want to to make those changes public immediately, uh, right? You maybe you want to approve them first, right? Uh, now, by default, by default, the way it works is that whoever the member of the site is, they can all make changes, you know, and uh, think you know change things uh, on your site and uh, then click the Republish button and the changes are automatically published for everyone. So here is how you enable the approval mechanism on this. Um, the, uh, you know, instead of the document library, we're going to navigate to the site pages library because that's where all the pages uh, reside and uh, essentially there will be an approval uh, process enabled on those pages. So we are going to site contents and site pages. That's where the pages reside. And what you want to do, once again, uh, believe under Integrate, Power Automate, uh, we have, in, you know, in addition to all these options, uh, we have Configure Page Approval Workflow. And once again, you just pretty much start from scratch. There will be a workflow created in Power Automate, just like with the other options. Uh, again, it's going through all the licensing checkups. Click Continue. And this is where you, you give it a name. I mean, let's stick to this one. And this is where you list approvers. You can um, add one or, you know, multiple people. Uh, let's just say I want Mary, you know, to approve or you can put your name over it, obviously, and click Create. And uh, what's going to happen? So once the workflow is created, you can obviously let me show you what just happened. So let's say now the workflow is on, right? And I want to edit the page. You can edit the page, not a problem. So let's just say I'm going to delete this element. Look, instead of the republish button, it says submit for approval button. And when you click on it, instead of this page being alive and available to everyone, you pretty much have to um, submit it for approval. And, you know, this is a note. Obviously, the approval has already been configured on the previous step. Um, you, you can just maybe clarify what you did. Uh, and um, this, the email will go to Mary, right? And uh, once again, I believe uh, she will also get Teams, um, you know, Teams uh, notification as well. But essentially, nobody will see my page until Mary checks the page and approves it. If you notice, it says pending approval, review approvals. Um, so yeah, that's obviously the button that uh, will be available um, to, um, you know, to the, to the approver to uh, approve. Um, I obviously don't see anything here, but yeah, it uh, constantly, you know, essentially it states that it's pending approval. And um, until Mary approves it, nobody will be able to 
uh, see the changes. Once if Meteor rejects, then the page will go to the previous state. Uh, essentially, no change for anyone. If uh, Mary, um, uh, you, you know, if Mary um, approves the page, she, then um, obviously the changes will be live, whatever I made. Okay. So that was the third type of uh, workflow approval. And um, here is the fourth one for you. And this one will only apply, I think, to uh, site owners who want to be maybe connect their site to the hub. Uh, let me explain to you what I'm talking about. So, uh, look, at the moment, the site is kind of as a standalone site. And let's say I want this, um, you know, site to be part of the internet, right? Uh, now, obviously, as the SharePoint admin, for example, I can connect any sites that I want. But, you know, let's uh, the site owners can also do the same from their site. For example, if I am the site owner, uh, of this uh, site, all I need to do is just click site information and I can associate my site with the hub. So that's actually how it works by default. Uh, any site can be easily connected to any other hubs and pretty much you don't have a choice, right? It automatically becomes part of your hub. Well, what if I am a hub owner and I really do not want anyone to connect to my site uh, without my approval? So what you can do is enable the fourth uh, workflow that we have available out of the box, and that, that is the ability to uh, connect sites to the hub. So for this hub site, I am the owner of this hub site, and I want to control who connects to my hub. So what I need to do is gear icon, hub site settings. Uh, by default, uh, there is no approval. Like I said, anyone can connect, but you know what I'm going to require an approval for associated sites. And I said required, I'm going to click create. And once again, it's creating the workflow behind the scenes, all the steps that are necessary. Uh, once again, let's just try and uh, log in again, I guess, maybe not. Here we go, perfect. Yeah, it just double checks the, uh, you know, license and requirements once again. And um, yeah, I'm going to make myself the approver uh, of this, um, you know, uh, requests, right? Uh, obviously, because I'm the hub site owner and I'm going to create a workflow. So what will happen now, I'll actually carry you through the whole uh, process once the workflow is created. We'll go ahead and connect, try to connect to this hub and we'll see what will happen. So yeah, you see, um, uh, the workflow has been created. So now, uh, when I'm just going to refresh here on the site, so now whoever the site owner is, they try to connect to the hub, they will still see the hub, um, you know, listed, um, uh, listed uh, in the list. So uh, just like that. And actually look at this, what it says now, approval is required to connect to this hub site. So essentially it's telling you right away, you're not going to be connected until, um, until uh, the, um, you know, the approver uh, essentially uh, approves the, um, you know, the approves the request. And yeah, okay, we will just uh, clarify, please approve. And essentially what will happen now, once again, I will get a request just like with page approvals uh, and I can either approve or reject. If I approve, the site will automatically be part of the, uh, my hub. If I reject, uh, it will not. So uh, this were the four um, workflows we can create in uh, SharePoint uh, out of the box. Um, I use those four options all the time. Um, once again, you don't even need to be familiar with uh, Power Automate, uh, we never even went once to the application, right? Everything was created from the SharePoint interface. And in my opinion, that's the real power of uh, the out of the box uh, approach. So uh, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you learned something new. As always, happy to see on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Goodbye.